Hello, and welcome to Girl STEM Academy. In this multi-part series, we are going to learn how to code in Java. Check out our last videos on primitive variables and recursion. In this video, we are learning about arrays and the relation to memory, then going through some examples. In our next video, we will cover a commonly asked interview question. When stored in memory, arrays look like this. They take up consecutive spaces of memory. The bottom row represents the index of each element of the array, and the top row represents the space in memory. One of the largest benefits of arrays is that they use random access memory. This means we can instantly get and set elements at any index in our array because it points to a place in memory. In other words, any given element in an array is not dependent on the previous or next element like it is with other data structures such as linked lists. As you watch this video, please click the subscribe button and click notifications on. It really makes a big difference for us to create good video content. How do we initialize an array? To initialize an array in Java, the syntax is the type, which would be the string, the int, double, or so on, empty brackets, then our array name, equals new, our type once more, brackets, and the size. In other words, the number of values in the array. Alternatively, we can write it the second version where the left-hand side initialization is the same, but on the right-hand side, we directly place each of our values separated by commas in a set of curly brackets. We would use the first version when our elements are not known and the second version when our elements are known ahead of time. Notice how for both initializations, the size of the array is clear. With arrays, we cannot change the size or add more elements past the maximum. To do that, we have to allocate more memory with a new array and copy all the original elements to the new array. Let's go through an example. I will be using the Eclipse IDE to code. Be sure to check out our video on how to download and install Eclipse if you haven't already. To code our array, we first have to determine the data type that we want to use. In this example, I will be using strings. So remember, we start out with our data type, in this case is string, our empty brackets, the name of our array equals new, data type once more, brackets, and the size of our array. And I will be having four elements in this array. Now, this will automatically initialize the array to be filled with the nulls because this is an array of strings. If it was an array of integers, for example, um, or ints, the array would be initialized with zeros. We can add elements this way cool array, so our array name, our value of our index is zero because this is the first index, equals, and then the value that we want to put in, and in this case, I'm putting in the string Java. So as you can see, everything is reliant on our indices. Arrays start out with index zero. Index zero is the first index, index 1 is the second element, index 2 is the third element, and so on. So in our first slot of our array, this is putting in the string Java. Now remember that arrays have random access memory, so we do not have to only place starting from index 0. For example, we can go to index 2, and place in another string or value there. Alternatively, we can also use the second version. So the left side is the same, but 
we directly place our values in a set of curly brackets and separate the values using commas. As you can see, this array has three elements, so it's very important that we know our size when using arrays. We would use the first version when we are initially unsure of what all of the elements would be, and we can use the second version when we already have all, our, all of our elements known. As you can see, everything in arrays is done using the index. As we did above, to add elements, we place our desired index in the brackets and set it equal to the value. To change elements, we do the same as adding. So for example, I want to change the first element in my array. So the left hand side would be the same, but now I just set it equal to something different. And that will change your element in your array. To get elements, we use a very similar syntax, but accessing the element in the array is on the right side of the equal sign. For example, we can use a variable and we would set it equal to what we had on the left side here because this is just accessing the element. We can use this to be able to traverse an array. I'm going to be using the array with known elements just so we can see all of the elements traversed. First, we can write a while or a for loop. In this case, I'll write a for loop. So for int i equals zero, i is less than. So what is i less than? Of course, we could count the number of elements and say three, but we don't want to do that when we know that we have a method for us. So we can do the name of our array, then dot length, and that will find the length for us. Then I plus plus. Now we can just print out the elements in our array. And I'm going to do this by using the name of my array. Then just as we did before, we would access the array using index 0, 1, 2, but that's what our for loop is for, so we're going to put index i. Let's run our code. And there you go. You, as you can see, it printed out each element in the array. Common errors when traversing arrays is getting index out of bounds exceptions. Be sure that you stop before before going past the length of the array. Notice how this is an i is less than rather than an i is less than or equal to. This is because arrays start at index zero, so it's very important that we understand that, for example, this array has indices zero, one, and two. There's no index three, although the length of the array is three. Let's run our code. And there you go. You, as you can see, it printed out each element in the array. So there you have it. That was an introduction of arrays to show you what they are and how to use them. In the next video, we will go over a common interview example. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning about arrays in Java. If you want to see any other video from us on any topic or specific Java concept that interests you, please mention it in the comments below. Check out our other videos on the metaverse and SQL. Please click the subscribe button to support us so we can add more content every week. Thank you for watching.